ability when hit by bullets and fragments and logs fuel leakage within six to eight hours. A radar warning system, IR jammer, chaff and flare dispenser are installed on the helicopter. Flight navigation equipment and automatic flight control system allow the helicopter to fly at any time of day in simple and adverse weather conditions, both by visual flight rules and instrument flight rules on any air routes and over reference terrain. Effective small arms gun, rocket and bomb armament allows the helicopter to accomplish various combat missions on destruction of ground and air targets. Depending on the preset task, the helicopter has more than 10 armament versions. The helicopter's armament includes a movable machine gun unit with a four barrel machine gun, caliber 12.7 millimeters. Universal gun containers with a 23 mm gun, unified helicopter pods with a machine gun, all grenade launching version, a Sturm anti tank complex with Sturm V missiles, rockets caliber 57 mm, 80 mm with different types of warheads, and bombs caliber from 50 to 500 kilograms and incendiary tanks. In order to increase firepower, an MI-35 gun version of the MI-24 helicopter was created. Instead of the built-in movable machine gun unit, a fixed gun unit with a two-barrel 30mm caliber gun is installed on the RH side of the nose section. Apart from the combat version, the helicopter can be used as a number of other versions. The medical version makes it possible to transport two wounded or sick people in upright position and two in prone position. The troop carrying version can transport up to eight paratroopers. The transport version is designed to transport ammunition and small cargoes of up to 1500 kilograms inside the cargo compartment and also carry large cargoes of up to 2,400 kilograms on an external sling. Further development of the MI-24V helicopter, export version MI-35, is the MI-35M helicopter. It is capable of accomplishing up-to-date combat missions at any time of day in simple and adverse weather conditions. The MI-35M features up-to-date armament and high tactical and technical characteristics. It differs from the basic model by an upgraded rotor system, a non-retractable landing gear, a shortened wing with a built-in special load lifting system, night vision goggles and adapted lights for their use. A navigation and electronic indication complex consisting of an observation site station with a thermal imagining guidance channel and laser range finder. Installed on the helicopter, radio communication equipment of a new generation, up-to-date high effective gun and rocket armament, including missiles of the air-to-air -air class. The radio electronic countermeasure system has been upgraded. The MI-35M helicopter's up-to-date high effective armament and night vision system doubles combat efficiency in comparison with the basic version. There are great hopes in another upgrading version developed on the basis of the MI-35. On this helicopter, as on the MI-35M, the fuselage is being modified and the lights are being adapted to night vision goggles. 
the Radio Electronic Complex Brio 24, and the Night Thermal Imagining Guidance System Zareva, together with the standard day guidance equipment, are intended for providing round-the-clock application of all types of the helicopter's guided and unguided armament. MI-35 type helicopters and their modifications possess a high performance and serve as effective and reliable means of fighting in present day conditions. The first six Afghan MI-35 pilots just graduated from a six-month training program. All are ex-pilots, some of whom flew during the Soviet era, and are ready to get back behind the stick. Today they conducted their first live call for fire exercise. The day starts with a custom weapons load for today's mission. While Czech Republic mentors look on, skilled Afghans take approximately 30 minutes to load 12.7 millimeter rounds and 57 millimeter rockets. The forward air controllers, or no checks, who are also MI-35 pilots themselves, will communicate friendly locations, enemy locations, and give the clearance to fire. Today's students will become tomorrow's instructors. So we're going to use the old guys that have done it, have flown the aircraft before, uh, to bridge the gap, and then we'll stand up a, a pipeline schoolhouse uh, at the at the Kabul Air Corps Training Center or the Air University uh, to start training and bringing on uh, new air controllers to push them out to the regional numbered corps and support of your ground forces. The Czech Republic and American mentors are stabilizing two primary missions for the fresh Afghan pilots. The first is a security escort mission, defending Afghan helicopters, transporting VIPs, troops or supplies as they move across the nation. The second mission is to provide protection for Afghan ground forces through pre-planned fires. This training is important to us. It is integral to verify enemy targets. We want to get prepared for future missions. After the six-month training, they were evaluated and recommended by the advisors to perform the two core operations. Four days later, the Ministry of Defense asked the pilots to fly show of force missions. These tried and true pilots will continue to grow their experience to pass on to the nation's future. From Kabul, Afghanistan, I'm Air Force Sergeant Michael Hughes.
Traffic, coalition traffic, Jehoon, 5-1, flight of 2 MI-17s, 2 MI-35s, 5 miles north of Hunter, free change, Hunter. Okay, what is Hunter's precept? So we'll pass around the east side, south side, landing north on the west. Thank you. 